So my brothers and sisters, this Thursday's thought, I'm going to focus on temples, particularly temples for the fellowship. I want to start off by telling you, for those who did not see last week's Sabbath service, and for those that did, the yeah that service, it, it was not me. Uh, I got up that morning, the Lord gave me a scripture, I shared my message based on what the Lord prompted me to talk about. And when I went to say the prayer, but when I pray, I always, I begin by thanking the Lord. And while I'm thanking him, I try to get in tune with the Holy Spirit and say the things that God would have me say. And I can tell you that Sunday, or I'm sorry, I actually recorded it on Saturday, but everyone watched it. It goes live on Sunday. But anyhow, when I was recording that, I was just overwhelmed with the Spirit. And I, yeah, those words were not my own. As I was praying, as I was saying these words, I was like, where is it? This is obviously coming from God, but this doesn't make any sense. I, I don't understand this at all, but if this is what the Lord is telling me to say, then I'll say it. You know, all things are possible with God. And afterwards, after, on Sunday, when it premiered and people watched it, there were a couple of people that wanted to discuss, and so we went to Slack. Slack, by the way, is where we in the fellowship uh, communicate about the work. And the reason why is because you know, there's no distractions you see in social media. It's just an easier system. And, and there are people that don't like Facebook and yada, yada. So it's just simpler to, to go there instead of to the typical social media platforms where people normally meet. Anyhow, so we had a good conversation, but I really felt that this Thursday, I should discuss and talk about the revelations I received about a temple, and I'm hoping that for those that heard that prayer and felt the Spirit, this will help guide us as we move forward trying to do the Lord's work. And I will give a little bit of historical context as we move along. Oh, and also, down in the descriptions, I'll put where in Doctrines of the Saints you can find these revelations. So the first revelation I'd like to discuss is I received it on December 13th, 2015. Now, for historical perspective, Christine and I had left the Salt Lake City Church in November previously. And so it, we weren't members of this church anymore. But for those that come from that church and think about that church, um, you know, you can't just walk away. So they had to have a trial and you know, yada, yada, yada. So I am still trying to figure things out. I've got a website at this point. I'm putting stuff on there as the Lord tells me to put it on there. And it's kind of funny because this state president I'm talking to, he's convinced there's like an army of people doing all this work. And I'm like, oh, yeah, no, it's it's just me. And he's like, there's no way one person is getting this done, you know, all, all that so quickly. Like, do you have a job? I'm like, yeah, I work full time. I'm just doing my thing. That's the Lord asked me to do. I, I don't see what the big deal is. Um, I don't know why. I always just found that amusing. But. Yes, yeah, so I'm talking to him, and, and and I leave, and I'm like, you know, God, did I represent you okay? I don't really understand why I need to do this. What's what's going on here? And he gives me this revelation, and towards the end of the revelation, in verse 79, we read 79 and 80 here. It says, And until such time as more keys are given thee, thou shalt gather my people and work that a temple shall be built and dedicated to me in my holy name. And for this end wast thou called. For behold, it pleaseth me that in every home there should be made a place to serve as a temple. And that ye always do remember to keep your homes holy, that I may find rest within. That did not bring clarity for me. Okay, so, you know, this, the state president may think that I have this army of people, but it's really just me. And so... And when I say this, at this point, like, no one has contacted me. It's, the website's getting a lot of hits, but no one has reached out yet at all. No one is interested in, in doing anything with the fellowship yet. So, I'm supposed to build a temple? I, I'm not rich, and there isn't anybody else. So, how is this supposed to happen? That, that's where my mind was. Looking back at it, well, the other well, the other thing to look at here is 
there's two parts to this. One is we're supposed to build a temple. But also, we're supposed to build a home temple. And so in my mind, reading this, I see and understand three temples here. First is us. We are the temples of the Lord. We house the Holy Spirit, right? Then two, a temple in our homes. And that's a place for the family to gather. And if you don't have a family, you personally or you and friends to gather to worship the Lord. And now you're, you know, the two or three gathering in my name. Well, then you have the congregation temple, right? Where multiple homes, multiple families, multiple people, however you, however you'll see this, enough people for a congregation can come together and worship the Lord. And I feel and very impressed that that's what this is saying here, that, that we need to have as, as saints all three temples. And currently, you know, in the fellowship, I generally encourage people to set up a home temple. In our house, in our living room, it's a good enough size that we have a little corner that has an altar in it, and that is set up as our home temple. I go there to worship the Lord, to, you know, my make my consecrated oil, consecrate my oil, et cetera, et cetera. It's where we do the sacrament, the sacrament of communion. So we're, in my family, we're at steps one and two, and this is asking for three. Uh, and, well, keep in mind, when I received this revelation at this point, I don't think we actually had uh, a, a temple set up yet. I think we did that later. And we've done, we've set a space apart for a temple in every home we've had. We've had to move a couple of times since then. And we've had a space dedicated as a temple each time to fulfill the request of the Lord here. But we've not been able to actually build a temple because you don't build a temple for a congregation, in my mind, without a congregation. So I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to do this. Just take these steps the Lord wants me to do and, you know, see what's next. What's next in January 10th? So we're going from December, let's say 15th, no, December 13th to January 10, so approximately a month later, in 2016. And uh, this is around the time that I was excommunicated officially. I received this revelation, it's very short, just 12 verses. And in it, it says, I say unto my faithful servant, this is verse 3, build a temple unto me that I may come into my house and that my people shall have a place to worship. Behold, all things are possible unto me, therefore I will provide a way that this work might be accomplished. Therefore I say unto thee again, build, me, build unto me a temple that I might come into the Holy of Holies and converse with thee. Skipping ahead. Verse 10, Therefore I say unto thee a third time, build unto me a temple that mine ordinances shall be performed therein. Keep it holy. That my glory shall be there. So we've got three calls here. Build a temple so that my people will have a place to worship. So it's, it's, it's a home for God. So I may come into my house and my people may have a place to worship. Right? Two, build a temple that I may come into the Holy of Holies. Three, build a temple so that the ordinances, the rituals, can be performed. So we have three things we're being commanded to do here and a, and a place we're being commanded to build in which to do them. So March 18th, a couple of months later, this is still in 2016, I received another, uh, another revelation and let's see here. Okay, so this one is was given to me to explain more about why we need to build a temple. And so in this one, it talks about the idea of more keys being given. And 
and it can't happen without being in a temple. So this kind of goes back to the whole Nauvoo. They didn't build the temple, and so they they had the stuff that Joseph Smith revealed to them, but they didn't really have the fullness of of what's supposed to happen in the temple. So if we want the fullness. We've we've got to build a temple, and I want to be clear here. I'm, I'm going to just kind of stop the flow here. This isn't a temple that's going to be private only for members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Christian Fellowship because we're not really a traditional church. We're an ecumenical movement. So the idea of us building a temple is more about creating a non-denominational space where it doesn't matter what denomination or sect you belong to within the Latter-day Saint movement, or even if you're just a, a regular Protestant or Catholic or other Christian or if you're not even Christian, the Kirtland Temple was open to everyone. And I feel the Holy Spirit telling me that that's the way that the fellowship temples will be. If there's a small congregation of whatever branch of, of Christianity out there that needs a spot to worship, there'll be a building. And they can schedule a time and they can come and they can have their, their worship services. They can have their meetings. Because it's it's a home for all to fellowship in Christ in. The key there, though, is that it will be for Jesus Christ. And so, therefore, anyone that wants to use the building, it would need to promote the worship and learning about the doctrines of Jesus Christ. So then later, there's another revelation. Uh, now, I'm, I'm skipping over the one about Israel. Uh, I received a revelation explaining what Israel is. And I'll put that one in the description, too. But I had another one that tied to that one. Um, I've titled it Make Ready the New Jerusalem. I had it February 18th of 2020. And in this one, it's calling all of the Latter-day Saint churches to build a temple. So this is not the same. It says this is not the same as the other revelations I've had. This is this is a another temple. Um, in verse 23, it says, more have I gathered and more have I preserved, but in my eyes, I'm sorry, but in me are ye not yet. Even as the lot of my temple, temple lot in Missouri, ye circle about me and place stakes in the corners, but ye have yet to build. And what is it ye should build? Ye are to gather, are ye to gather to one church in my name, speaking of churches of men, I say and see, nay, for all are my church, even the churches of Christ. Therefore, be ye one in my name. So this goes back to the idea I was just talking about, about non-denominational temples. But this is one the Lord wants all the churches to build. It, it, it talks about community of Christ, the Cutlerites, the Brighamites, all getting together to build this temple. So this is a revelation from me to all Latter-day Saints. But it's not instruction specifically to the fellowship. This isn't something I'm supposed to take charge of or lead or go do. This is something that all of the Latter-day Saints are supposed to go do. And, and it kind of gets the ball rolling with some things that each sect has been asked to do for their part. But they're supposed to build a council. And that council is supposed to decide what, you know, how to build the temple, where to know where, and so on and so forth. But it's supposed to be non-denominational and open to all. And it's the same thing. To me, this is this is a larger, big picture idea of what we in the fellowship are trying to do on the smaller scale. We want to build something that is non-denominational because not everybody's going to be able to get to Missouri. And that said, it's not like we can build temples anywhere, let alone all over the world. We need temples in Missouri, Ohio, all over the United States, really, all over Europe, all over. Uh, in Africa and Australia, because these are the places where I talk to people. And I know there are people that want a fellowship. And really the biggest problem as far as organizing the fellowship is that we are all so spread out. We're all brought together online, but everybody wants this. They want, they want a place they can go and they can sit. They want a church building. They want a temple. They want a congregation. And the problem is that this has to happen one person at a time. So, you know, we may have one person or two people or five people or how many people come in, but then because it's so small, they're like, I'm going to go look for something else with more people. 
if everybody would have stuck around at this point, we'd have a lot of people. But even if we did, it's still online. I mean, we really were happy to do the, the COVID service and they were well received. But as soon as we could start going and meeting people in person, it, 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 it ended. There was really no point in continuing it because people want to be around other people. They don't want to just look at each other on a camera. So I had another revelation, and this one it was one that I, I had this one February 28th, so just, what was it? Uh, it? Yeah, 10 days after the Make Ready a New Jerusalem revelation. And this one was kind of out of nowhere. Like Over time, we had discussed as a, as a council of elders, and you know, I had asked some questions to the Lord about the priesthood and how things are supposed to work, and just kind of out of nowhere, the Lord's like, hey, it's time. I'm going to give you this revelation. I'm going to tell you this stuff. And in this revelation, in verse 31, towards the end, the Lord says, Now I say unto thee again, build my temple. Build my temple up, that I may send Elijah the prophet unto thee, and that there ye shall learn more of the patriarchal and matriarchal priesthood. So here's another reason why the Lord wants us to build the temple. It kind of goes back to what was said earlier about more keys that are coming, more knowledge, more information. Apparently, the Lord wants a particular place. Uh, it continues on to say that thy covenants may be made to seal the hearts of the fathers to the children and the children to the fathers. That thy anointings and sealings given unto all those that have been called and elected in my name are made sure. Or in other words, that thou might see me face to face, that ye may know that I am from everlasting to everlasting. So, that's a pretty strong promise there. But that is the goal of the Latter Saint movement, right? For us to be able to see personally Jesus. That's the apostolic call. It's the call given really to all of us. We, we all want to become apostles and see Jesus Christ. It's one of the things that ties Mormonism and Masonry, to, I'm sorry, Mormonism and Kabbalah together. Both of them, the key point of them is to reach God, to actually have God manifest before you. Not in a Doubting Thomas sort of way, but in a brother of Jared sort of way, where you're so faithful that it can't be helped. It's just going to happen. And then finally, the Lord, you know, it's been asked us to do temples, and as a council of elders, we discussed it, and this idea came about, well, what if we build a tabernacle? A tabernacle can travel. We can you take it place to place, set it up. We could, you know, tour with it, so to speak. And we would have a place to do the Lord's work. And we all thought this was a great idea. And so they said, Dave, go to the Lord and receive a revelation. Ask, ask for a revelation on this. And I did. And I got nothing. Absolutely nothing. Well, the, the third member of the First Presidency at that time, uh, she went by the name of Ruth. She is a member of the Salt Lake City Church, so she had to use a, so she wanted to use, she didn't have to, we could make her. She wanted to use a pseudonym, an alias, because she was afraid of being excommunicated. And anyhow, so she felt impressed by the Spirit to bring back this holy day uh, that is dedicated to Heavenly Mother. It's a, um, the Jews still do it, it's, it's the New Year of the Trees. And she prayerfully, you know, she received a revelation asking her to do this, and she put it together, and it was a beautiful service. And here's the thing. Putting that together actually unlocked the key so I could receive the revelation. At this point, I thought, well, the Lord must not want us to build a tabernacle because that revelation is not coming. But once, and as far as I know, this is the first time the Latter-day Saint movement has celebrated this holy day. Once we celebrated this, this holy day with the key unlocked, all of a sudden, January 30th, I received this revelation. And I'm not going to read it to you because it's really long, but it goes over how to build a tabernacle, how to build a synagogue, which would be a, like a, 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 a branch, a smaller congregation, uh, and, and a temple. And the Lord gave us specific sizes for all of these. And the whole idea here is... We're not building great and spacious buildings. We will be building 
smaller buildings so that they can really actually dot the earth and the ones that everyone will be welcome in. And it lays out everything, both in the here's how you do a traveling tabernacle and also in the here's how you do it when you're actually, you know, when you bought property, you're putting it here, it's staying here. This is this is what the Lord wants. And there's a lot of really good information in here. Uh, not just the, the temple measurements, but a number of other things. It talks about uh, things to put around the outside of the temple and what things to go inside of the temple. And what we're supposed to do with the temple it isn't just for rituals. It's also to feed people. We're supposed to have a, a an altar we put bread on. And it it seems clear to me anyway that this is supposed to be the bishop's storehouse, the, the food bank. And the bishop's storehouse may be somewhere else, but we're supposed to bring food in so that when someone's hungry and they come, they can eat here. So the Lord has a very clear mission for the fellowship. It's it's laid out very, very well. It's it's not confusing. It's just a matter of the willingness of the saints. Are we faithful enough? Are we believing enough? Are we willing to do this? Now, I've prayed to the Lord. I've asked him, you know, will you bless me with the money? Will you bless me with a job to, you know, so I can pay for this, so I can build this? I kind of have this field of dreams idea. If I build it, they will come. And the Lord has told me, no, this this has to be built by by all of us. I can make a I can make videos for the rest of my life. I stopped writing blog posts because the videos are a bit faster and saves me a bit of time. But I could keep writing blog posts for the rest of my life. Same with the the Sabbath services. I can keep doing those. But when it comes to building a community and building a place for a community to gather, it's something that we have to do together. It's not something that one person is called to do alone. Or at least that I'm not called to do alone. I don't know. If there's some person feeling the spirit watching this video that says, I feel impressed by the spirit to fund all of this, then obviously that still isn't that person doing it alone because I'm receiving the revelation. Other people have born testimony and witness of this revelation. The Holy Spirit is moving that person to send funds. Other people have already sent funds. So it's still, it, it already as it is, it's already become something that we are working on together. It, this one isn't just me. But it also isn't there yet. It isn't enough. If we're going to build a tabernacle, we need the people to do this. I can't build a tabernacle. Um, Christine could be involved in it, but she and I, by ourselves, I don't think we could build a tabernacle. We need the funding to build a tabernacle. We already talked to people who have land that they would be willing to let us, that we could travel to where they are, we could put up the tabernacle, we could have events there. And we would tear the tabernacle down and we would take it someplace else to store it and tell it's time to take it somewhere else. So we have places to actually use the tabernacle. But we don't have the funding to build the tabernacle. I feel impressed by the spirit and Christine and I both, we, we travel Missouri, we travel around here in Ohio. We feel very moved by the spirit. We need to put up synagogues or temples, depending on how many people are wanting to get involved in these areas in these two places. We're supposed to be sharing the gospel and building the gospel, at least there. I know of other people who want to build synagogues, uh, not big enough to build a temple, but synagogues at least, if they could get to a point to build a temple first, then even better, in their states or their countries. But it's, it's a matter of funding. We have a brother who has set up to help out with the technology portion. Every month he sends $5 and he, you know, there's, there's over 500 people on our mailing list. If every single one of those people were to donate just $5, we would be a lot better off financially and we could do a lot more. So, yes, there is a call to action here. If you want to see this, we need you to get involved. We need you to get involved financially. We need you to get involved by coming to meetings and, and helping decide how to do this. The fellowship isn't a dictatorship. I'm receiving these revelations, but what I want and what I feel the Lord wants is for us 
to receive these revelations. Where is it we're supposed to build? Let's, let's say we're going to build a temple. We're, we're going to do it. We've got the money. We get the funds. I'm not going to walk out to some field and say, you know, this is the place. We are going to counsel together. The people in a particular area will come to us and say, we've raised funds. This is where we're at. If you have funds you can give and we can, you know, drive funding from, from other places, that's great. But we feel impressed to build a temple here. And then Christine and I will get our family in the van. We'll go there and we'll pray together and we will see, we will receive a group revelation as to what it's going to look like and how it's going to happen. I always think about one of the apostles after they were called and you know they're, they're, they're ready to go. They call me up and they say, okay, Dave, I'm ready to get to work. Tell me what to do. I'm like, you're the Lord's apostle. You're not mine. I want you to get on your knees and ask the Lord, what is it you're supposed to do? And then you come to me and we'll discuss that and try to together figure out what that means. By the mouth of two or three witnesses, I am not a single witness. It's not my job to have a bunch of revelations and tell people what to do. So the first witness is always going to be the Holy Spirit. Any revelation I receive, I receive it through the Holy Spirit. So then, me, I become the second witness. The third witness are any of those that also feel the Holy Spirit testifying to them that this revelation is true. So if you feel the Holy Spirit, as I'm reading these revelations to you, if you feel the Holy Spirit telling you these revelations are true, you are now one of the two or three witnesses. And obviously that means that there's a lot of witnesses, more than just two or three. But being a witness requires action. What are you going to do with that testimony? What are you going to do with that witness? I want to once again invite you to join Slack. Send me an email, info at dferriman, I'm sorry, I have two email addresses, dferriman at cjccf or info at cjccf. I generally recommend you just use the info at cjccf because it's just easier to remember when I'm talking. And I don't edit these videos, so you get all my mistakes. So there's my email addresses. Reach out. I will add you on Slack. Join the conversation. There's a lot of people there. There's a little bit of talking. But the talking that we're having, when, when we're discussing these things, the Lord is with us. And we are striving to move forward in Christ. So my Thursday thought for you is, what is the Holy Spirit telling you about building a non-denominational temple? What is the Holy Spirit telling you about this movement, the Latter-day Saint movement? We have a lot of people watching. We need more people doing because this is the Lord's work and he will make a way and brothers and sisters as we're moved by the spirit to do the Lord's work we are that way so that's my Thursday thought for you and I leave it with you in the name of Jesus Christ amen